Today, we are joined by Sabari Ramnath, Senior Product Manager at Unisys. Welcome. Welcome, Sabari. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for having me here. I am kind of excited to get into this topic today. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's everything that is on top of everyone's mind. Supply chain efficiencies, improving it. How can we do it? Where, where, how can you spot those inefficiencies? And I'm excited to dive into that today. Before we get too far into that, though, let's get some background on you and how you got started at Unisys. Well, wow, that's a great story, right? So um, I've been, uh, you know, in this logistics technology industry for almost two decades. Right. Like most of the logistics professionals, I also, you know, joined this industry by mystique. Right. So I started in my career uh, in a startup, you know, and that is where my thousand mile journey, you know, began. Uh, I started loving this industry there. Right. And since then, I've been building uh, the IT solutions for the air cargo industry to automate the end to end processes of their businesses and also building the optimization solutions by comparing the supply and demand and so on. So that's my history, right? But if you look at the Unisys history, so Unisys has been in this uh, industry for the last four decades, right? So, you know, when during 80s, when the other industries started, uh, you know, adopting to the digital solutions, we built the digital solution for the logistics industry, right? And during 90s, when the internet was born, when Amazon was selling the books through the internet, Unisys built the solution for the airlines to sell their air cargo capacity to the freight forwarders, right? And that is the innovation, right? So the innovation is in our DNA. But fast forward now, if you look at this, when the other businesses are adopting the artificial intelligence based solution, we are developing the AI based solution for this logistics industry. That's the history of Unisys. So if I compare the journey and vision of uh, Unisys with my journey and vision, it's perfectly matched, right? So that's why I landed here. And, uh, you know, it's been almost uh, seven years and the journey is continuing. I absolutely love that. And I also love that you have a very similar logistic story of um, you didn't set out with your heart set on logistics. You just you fell into it and turns out logistics, once it gets its arms around you, it doesn't really like to let go as yeah. I was as, as experienced. Never. Yes. <laughs> so one of the things that um, Unisys is really great at is knowing, you know, how to identify those inefficiencies in a supply chain and really just kind of make sure that a company is operating at the very, the very top tier that they can be. So can you kind of share some of those common deficiencies you guys have seen in logistic, uh, logistics operations and just kind of how that really does negatively impact a company's ability to win that new business? I'm seeing there are three deadly deficiencies in this logistics operations, right? And it is very generic, whether, you know, you are doing the air business or ocean logistics or rail or freight forwarding or 3PLs. Three deficiencies are very common. The number one is the inefficiency, right? Most of the logistics operations are still manual today, right? And most of the operations are still using the paper. And that causes the inefficient in the supply chain, right? In air cargo, there was a study. So that they, they, they come up with, if they just convert the few main documents into digital, that could save 7,800 metric tons of paper, right? 7,800 metric tons. If I put that into context, that can ca carry an 80 Boeing 777 freighters, right? It's so probably, you know, that one full Merck's uh, triple E uh, ships. So that much of paper we have been using for the businesses. It not only impact the business, but also impact the environment, right? So the number two is the lack of visibility and transparency, right? The shippers need the visibility from the global, you know, the, from the logistics. If we miss to provide that visibility to our customers, then we are missing the businesses, right? And the third other important part point is it's a lack of collaboration, right? Whether we like it or not, this industry has a lot of stakeholders, right? So the good sh handshaking needs to happen. Right, so that each parties need to collaborate with each other in an efficient manner. 
if they don't collaborate it well, then it causes again inefficient in the supply chain, right? So these are the deadly deficiencies that what I would call it, and that the industry needs to correct it, you know, for the better outcome for the businesses. I, um, first of all, I love that you brought up the manual process and running a supply chain on paper. Um, and not too far long ago, my, one of my, um, first like big brokerage situations, um, I had to fax a BOL wow. to somebody and I was like, do we even have a fax machine? <laughs> and so I just kind of walked around the office to people like, do we have a fax machine? And they're like, I think like I think it's like buried in a corner barely even hooked up but like nobody uses it and yep. I was just like okay I guess I'm gonna go learn how to fax something um just because it's not something that we do and also um kind of on that on that thing on that same train of thought is the um okay so you have digitized everything and um maybe we should just stop running our supply chains on excel don't get me wrong I love Microsoft excel as much as the next person I mm -hmm. love it. It's wonderful. However, it should not be running entire supply chains, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So Excel is not the only automation tool for your information, Mary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we love a good macro as much as the next person. Um, but yeah, let's maybe, let's maybe upgrade a little bit yeah, from true, there true, uh, because true. there's so many better tools out there true. for a lot of things. True. True. So You've highlighted those three main areas in, of uh, if, of improvement. So how do you guys, when you come in, you find, okay, let's work with these same three. You find these three problems. How do you kind of approach, do you look for those problems every single time? Kind of how do you identify and address these deficiencies within an organization? Do you guys take specific steps? Are there specific methods you implement? I would suggest to whoever, you know, I consult with, I would suggest a simple three, um, you know, letter methodology. It's called A, okay, A-I-M. A stands for assess. I stands for implement. M stands for monitor, okay. If you really need to change something or bring efficiency in the supply chain, start with assessment. Assess, you know, where your business is currently why you are having inefficiency in your operations what are the problems today whether your problem you know lies in people or process or technology right understand that collect the data right so identify the root cause so that will give you the good visibility of where there is an inefficiency in your operations right so the assessment is first once your assessment is done then implement the solution implement the right solution for your right requirement, right? Maybe you need to bring visibility to your customers, then bring the IoT based solutions, right? So that gives the real time visibility to your customer. So get the right solution for your needs. Once you get the right solution, then don't stop there, right? That is where the, the very important uh, letter comes, which is YUM, right? You need to monitor this. If you don't monitor the solutions, you might be thinking that the solution is solving your needs. It might be not, right? If it is not solving your needs, again, do the, say, the steps again. Start with assessment, implement the right solution, and then monitor it. So I would recommend to follow the simplest and effective AIM methodology, you know, to address the deficiencies in the operations. That management part is something that I think everybody overlooks so easily because oh we have this solution we've implemented it problem solved we're good we don't ever need to revisit this ever again when in reality that's the whole make or break point you need to know okay well this is um we've had this problem we fixed it but you need to monitor it i'm not saying you need to check every day but you need to check in regularly have set time periods that this is a check-in kind of how's it going because you want to make sure that it's working because the last thing you want is to fix one problem, but then have it break something else over here. And so now the original problem solved, but it's created like a little offshoot of more problems that you have to solve. 
Um, whereas if you just kind of sat there and said, okay, we fixed this. Oh, we have another problem over here. Well, let's redesign the solution to make it work for everyone. I think that that's something that a lot of people overlook and kind of need to really make sure that, you know, they're addressing all of that. And I'm really glad that you brought that up because like, like you said, it's a very overlooked part. It's popped on. Yes. <laughs> so one of the things that everybody, um, it's, it's, it's all new. It's the new hotness is, you know, um, data and AI and all of that. And so um, I think what everybody gets caught up in is collecting all of this data and, oh, look, I have this great data mining tool. Okay, but what are you going to do with it? So yes. when it comes to kind of taking data to make a plan, what role does that play? Is that a, is that a strong move to take your data, your historic data, and make a future plan from it? Um, how do you leverage that data to make more informed decisions as a company? See, you, you, you're, you're spot on, Mary, right? So the data is going to play the biggest role in this logistics operations. Right? As you rightly said, you know, when we started automating the processes, you know, when the business is having the IT solutions that they generate the data, right? And when they have brought in some kind of IoT devices or some other automation tools, that also they generate the data. So people think that those who are having more data, they are the king, right? There are some other things like, no, I'm having a new oil, right? But I would say, if you don't know how to use the data efficiently, then you are missing something in your, you know, which is lies in front of you, right? So you need to know this, how to use the data. And the data-based solutions, you know, can help you to improve any areas in, in the businesses, right? Whether it is sales or marketing, or operations, or even finance, right? To think of this, if you're a salesperson, if the data-based solution helps you to sell more, then that will help you to improve in your career, right? And your businesses also will improve. So don't just generate the data as you rightly mentioned, right? So the thing like, hey, I have more data. More data is not going to be useful. How we are going to use the data for the betterment of your business, that is where the benefit lies. I could not agree more. That is something that I have talked about a lot is, you know, you if you have, if you get this great machine learning AI data tool that's going to be able to do all of this cool stuff and solve all of your problems, you could spend millions of dollars and get this software and implement it and everything like that. But unless you have someone to sit there and say, okay, this is what the data has told. This is what we can create into an actionable plan. Then you've just spent a lot of money for something that yes. can gather a bunch of information. True. True. It's kind of, I think that that's something that a lot of people forget about is that you, you need to have that person to sit there and interpret it and make those recommendations and make those decisions. Um, because it's coming from ultimately a place of knowledge, but other than if you don't have that person that's going to sit there and interpret and analyze the data, then you just have a really like cute data collection tool. Yeah, yeah. So you have to use data collection tool, and you 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 know, see if 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 it's also depend on the scale of the business, right? If if you are running a small business, then your human knowledge is enough. Right? If you have big business and if you have big data. The human intelligence is not enough. It, it is required, but not enough. That's where the machine comes into play, right? So that's where the artificial intelligence helps. But don't just leave the artificial intelligence to say this, that will help you to optimize my businesses and so on. You need to apply your human intelligence also there, right? You need to check there, right? So the, the artificial intelligence with the human intelligence will bring the result. 100% both intelligences need to work together um, because I would like to think that, you know, our good old friend Amazon, who started as a bookseller, uh, I would like to think that they aren't running uh, the entire billion dollar, multi-billion dollar company on just some some guy's brain. I would like to think that they've maybe made some large infrastructure investments. True, true, true. Yeah. So um, we talked about different um, data collection and kind of how technology is, is should be a welcome thing in the supply chain and logistics space, moving away from paper, uh, moving away from putting things on paper. When you're sitting there and you're, and you are a business leader or a decision maker and you say, okay, now's the time to introduce some technology. 
how do you determine where to start? What technology is worth it? What technology is just making the empty promises? Kind of, how do I know where to start? See, I think uh, adopting the digital solution is a journey, okay? So, so some may be in very early in the journey, right? So they just want to, uh, you, you know, tra transmit their manual way of doing the business to the digital way of doing business, right? Some wants to convert the paper into digital, right? For them, uh, the the automated end-to-end, -end, uh, the the automated solutions help to help them to improve their businesses, right? So, like you said, that you used Excel. Excel will help you in some part, but there are some automation tools will help you to automate the most of the processes, right? So that is that is for someone who is early in the journey. And if your need is, you know, to bring the visibility to your customer, then you need to think of IoT-based solutions, right? So that gives the visibility to, to, to your customers and to your operations. Some may be, you know, that's so advanced in the journey, right? So they have automated their entire operations. Now they need to think of how to optimize it. Right. So using the data, they have it using that all the information have it, how to optimize their operations so that that will help the benefits. First, identify where in the journey you are in. Right. And apply the solutions. So Ulysses, for examples. Right. So being in this industry for long, as I said, if any of the players, right, or if anyone needs a help in adopting the technology solutions, they can contact us. Right. So we can also help them to bring the solutions for their needs. You know, it's uh, that, that, that's how that we can solve the problem. So we brought in the expertise in, you know, solutions, so the IT solutions. And and that actually solves the, you know, the problems really exist in the logistics industry. I think that's a really fantastic point. And that's something that, you know, we've we've kind of talked about before, and that is, um, you know, if you are a shipper and you are really good at making cakes, muffins, pastries, et cetera, et cetera, and you want to improve your supply chain, it's kind of stick with what you are really, really good at. You are an expert at baking pastries. This is an instance where hiring out or going to the experts in moving things and logistics and other stuff like that. I think that that's something that cannot be overstated enough is to stick with kind of your core values, your core of what you manage. And because just because you're a wonderful world-class baker doesn't necessarily mean you also need to become a world-class logistics person. Um, just make sure to seek out those resources because there's an expert in that field. You just have to find them, you know? Yep. And trust your experts. <laughs> exactly. They trust your experts. Don't suddenly tell someone that has 40 years of experience, you're wrong. You don't understand how trucks work. Yeah, yeah. My bad. My yeah. bad. That'd be like them yeah. coming and saying, you know, I think if you redid your entire cake recipe, it would go a lot better. True. True. So thank you so much for joining us today. If someone has extra questions and they're wondering, um, you know, maybe how do I find an expert in this situation? Where can they find you guys outside of the show? Go to www.unisys.com. You know, that that's our company. And if you want to follow me in LinkedIn, it's a sabari.romnath. So, so I'm there and there. So if you want to write an email to me, it's sabari.romnath at unisys.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Mary.